Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. Today we're going to look at Manuscript P46. This is part of the Chester Beatty collection. Uh, some found at the University of Michigan, others at the University of Dublin. This is just a sampling of what you get in what's known as P or papyrus number 46. Now a couple of things that make P46 very unique. We're going to look at that here in just a moment. Some things that make that unique is that it contains almost the entire uh, epistles of Paul. I'll show you the list of what is here in the contents. But it is almost the entire epistles of Paul are found in P46. Now you might say, well, where you know papyrus that's usually very old um, the circumstances of the finding of p46 as with the rest of the chester Beatty collection are somewhat unique because nobody knows exactly where they were found they were actually either found in aphroditus or something like that or aphroditeipolis i can't pronounce it uh crocodilopolis or something in in egypt but um it was basically illegal antiquities. But here's the deal, is paleographical dating of P46 to the later first century. And so there is this amazingly um, compelling case to be made that this almost entire corpus that we would find, you know, 2 Peter 3 says that Paul's writings were being distributed in toto at that time with date from the latter half of the first century. And this was done by Young Ku Kim. And basically his paleographical evidences uh, have to do with the style of the writing. It says, first I examined the ligature forms of P46, which until now have not received due notice. This sort of calligraphy uh, hand with its striking effort to keep the upper liner is unknown to me after the first century, at least in a consistent usage and is found mostly in the later Ptolemaic period, which would be from, let's say, the second century BC to the early century, uh, early second century AD. So what that's talking about is just the style of writing of P46 dates, the latest you could date it would be either 100 AD or soon thereafter, the very latest, because there's no other examples of its writing style of not just biblical things, but of anything of which they found thousands of different, uh, you know, material deeds and uh, wills and all kinds of things, rental properties, laws from the, those time periods. So Kim is saying here that he would date it to the first century, maybe the latter half of the first century. Now, what's fascinating to me, as almost always happens in an effort to be very careful and an effort almost to be gratuitous that uh, New Testament scholars, Bible believers, they tend to say, well, we'll go ahead and say, like Phil Comfort says, he thinks it's from 150 to 175 AD. And basically what they're doing is saying, we're going to take the evidence and add another 50 to 200 years to it. And we'll still say that the Bible's 100% true, this type thing. So you have that here. A lot of people would date it to about 225 AD, 200, 225 AD. But the paleographical evidence, which is the study of how the letters are written, and also the nomina sacra, the usage of about 15 things that refer to deity that they would abbreviate including Jesus Christ, which shows at a very early period Jesus was thought at as, as deity. It wasn't something that was developed later in all this. Um, so P46, very well from the first century AD, yet another great proof of the historicity of Jesus Christ and the Bible 
Friend, I'm going to tell you, you can put your faith in Jesus Christ. Go back to that old time religion. Go back to the first century apostolic church. Don't settle for the mist of darkness. Don't settle for denominationalism. Don't get caught up in church history. Go straight to scripture and believe the Bible. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Live a holy life. God loves you. He cares for you. The Bible's true. Let every man be a liar. God bless you in Jesus' name.